money talks, baby. Money talks. Money does all the talking right now. So, you know, AEW wants to, <clears throat> wants to move that route. Show me the money. So before we get to this chat, and it's such a good one, a huge thank you to Limitless CBD for sponsoring this video. And I, I don't talk about it a lot, but I played baseball from age four all the way through college and completely ruined my right arm and shoulder. And I've tried everything. I've tried all the creams, all the ointments, but this right here has been a complete game changer for me. The Freeze CBD roll-on has given me so much relief. And I'm sure you can relate. You've got that nagging pain or that nagging injury that when you wake up in the morning, you're just like, ooh, yeah. Also a big fan of the CBD gummies, which have helped so much with inflammation and recovery after the gym. And of course, there's no THC in any of their products. You can check out the entire Limitless CBD lineup by going to LimitlessCBD.com. I'll also put the link down below in the description. Use the code CVV20 and you'll get, yes, yeah, you'll get 20% off which is a very generous discount. Thank you so much for that, Limitless CBD. Oh, also you get free shipping on any of their orders. So if you currently use CBD or you've been thinking about using CBD, it really doesn't get much better than this deal. Now let's get to it. My chat with Tama Tonga, which is too sweet. Tama Tonga, ladies and gentlemen, it's so wild that I'm the one with facial hair and you are not. <laughs> Do you telling me the, 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 the virus hasn't caught up to you yet, man? <laughs> well, apparently it's had the reverse effect on me. Like I just stopped <laughs> shaving. I don't know where you found the energy you want to shave. <laughs> That's true, man. Oh my goodness. It's, it's 2020 is a hell of a year, man. It is, but uh, you know, but, but both you and I are making the best of every single day. That's right. That's right, man. Yeah, so what right. happened to the beard? Uh, 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 you know, with everything happening so far, with with 2020, the pandemic, being home all this time, uh, I think I was just looking for a change, and I figured that was the that was the change I was gonna do was just shave off my beard. <laughs> you know, you're looking that. you're looking more like the good good guy right now. <laughs> The baby face heel, huh? That's it. Oh, yeah. That's what we got here. So thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to do this. It's exciting to see that New Japan is moving forward. And, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon yeah. with New Japan. Oh, for sure, man. Thank you for having me. And, you know, New Japan Cup USA is, uh, well, it's underway right now. And uh, That's right. This is great. It's an opportunity for fans here in America to see what New Japan is all about. I think some people have seen a taste here and there, but now they can really take in this full thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited, man. It's, you know, this, like we said a little earlier, that this kind of uh, uh, 2020 is a little strange, but there's, there's definitely it's made some changes, made some, some uh, progress. We're here in New Japan. We're still trying to push forward no matter uh, the situation. And I think this uh, New Japan Cup being out here in America is, is a nice start, a nice beginning for some, uh, especially that need in JPW strong, you know. Yeah. Um, um, real exciting times. Is there any word on when you might be able to go to Japan? Um, they, they said, you know, they sent us some a couple of days ago for like, uh, for the uh, Japan embassy. There's this paperwork that we got to fill out about and this information about quarantining. So, you know, we haven't heard anything probably in the last three months. And to see that was like, okay, there's, there's something here. So, you know, we're just trying to, I think, prepare just in case, um, uh, you know, the, the, the travel ban uh, is lifted quick and we can just go back, but there's a process of doing this. So I think we're just trying to get that cleared out. So, no, there's no word. <laughs> Lost, <laughs> no official it. word. No, no official word. I've got but my fingers crossed. That I was planning yeah. to go to the Tokyo Dome show. So. Oh hell yeah, man! Yeah, that, worst case scenario, that would be the time we go head back is Tokyo Dome. But 
let's not hope for worst case scenarios. Right, one way or another, you know, you could yeah, stow yourself yeah. away on a plane or something, a cargo plane. Right. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> You're making it happen one way or another. <laughs> I, I think there still are, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people here in the U.S. who haven't seen a ton of New Japan, or maybe they've just seen a few clips here on YouTube mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. What What can they expect when they watch, you know, a full New Japan show? Um, I think just our style is a different kind of style uh, in wrestling. Um, I feel uh, personally is a more impactful uh style different kind of storytelling um and it, it's like a mixture of the old japanese style wrestling versus the new school um mm. if well for those who don't do who don't know about the old school is more uh so that's where the term strong style came from and and uh we we've incorporated that we've evolved and and put a little bit more of our new school style because of the the new you know new guys new um foreigners that, that mixed into the japanese wrestling so a little bit more uh man <laughs> strong style uh, i'll stick with strong style and, and new school that, that's the can see a little hard-hitting storytelling um fast pace i would feel yeah i yeah. I'll go with that in a typical year where there isn't a, you know, worldwide pandemic, how many, how many weeks out of the 52 would you say you're spending in Japan? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, let's just say 80% of the year I'm in Japan. Oh, wow. Do you, yeah. you have a, do you have a house there? No, no. I'm, you know, there's some guys do, um, but yeah, Osprey I, I was like, telling me he had a place there. Yeah, he got a place. Um, there was, you know, there's we we get an option, but I like when a maid come cleans my room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't like to clean my own my room, man. I like fresh sheets. <laughs> but you're there eighty percent of the time. That's you know yeah. nine or ten months that you're there. Right. Yeah. We, we were just talking about that with my family. Uh, I'm here visiting my family. You know in Orlando and we we're talking to my mom and dad and um, it, you know, my daughter was born at the beginning of this pandemic at the very beginning at the first day when Florida shut down and I've been home to see her grow. Yeah. And I'm, we, I never had that. My son is two years old and I missed out most of the, that first year because I was on the road. So this has been a blessing um, in disguise. So um, yeah just being here I'm just taking it all in enjoying it because i know once we get going um it's a go 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 time you know so yeah, what, a, what a silver lining though what a silver yeah. lining that you're there for your daughter yeah. in her first few months of life yeah yeah oh Great. that's amazing yeah so what what have you been doing since march <laughs> Uh, a whole lot of squats at the, at the house body squats hindu squats uh not just trying to work out trying to stay fit uh and and adjust well, gyms are open uh, there again yeah yeah the gyms are open um really just being with the family uh and, and just taking that in that's that's been my main thing is just spending time with, with the kids and, and my wife and family and enjoying that uh trying to stay fit uh thinking of of how to evolve as a wrestler that's where the beard came off <laughs> you know and, and <laughs> You know, I, I think once we go back, there's got to be, uh, I think, uh, a new chapter in, as, as, a, as a wrestler and also trying to evolve and keep, keep it fresh, you know, keep it is reinventing. This, is this a new Bullet Club chapter? I think so. I think mm -hmm. so. I believe so. You know, and uh, you always got to stay at the front of, of, of uh, mainstream and got to keep figuring out how to keep reinventing yourself and the group and wrestling. So definitely a lot of time home to, to think all, all of this. So time to put it to work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so with that said, when you're working on new stuff and you're trying mm -hmm. out new ideas, how do you know when something's working or when you go, you know what, this was a terrible idea. Uh, you throw it at the, you know, I have social media. It's like, you know, and I put it out there to see, um, you know, you just throw it at the wall, see if it sticks. And it's, it, it, the old spaghetti on, model. Yeah, yeah, you know, so they like it. Okay, you 
nice check on it. You keep that, hold on to it, and, and keep going, you know. Uh, but, yeah, the fan base, you, you throw things out. Luckily, we have social media, you know, to, to test these things out. Um, well, you know, some of it, you know, obviously the wrestling part, that's going to be on the back burner for right now. But more the image, the just how to uh, interact with fans. And we see it like that. At least that's how I see it for now. Yeah, I guess in the world before social media, it was go out there and wait for a crowd reaction. Yeah. Now yeah. you've got a crowd reaction at your fingers. Right. Fingertips. Yeah. It's crazy times, man. Yeah, it is a while. Well, I mean, you've, you've stirred up some interesting stuff on social media. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like we could talk all day about, uh, you know, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> some of these interesting things. Um, <laughs> I don't know where we start with this. Um, <laughs> I recently talked to Enzo Amore, who basically oh, said, man. "You're like the fifth person to talk to me about this shit." Today. <laughs> this well, you know, he's he's a friend of mine, and he's like, you know what? If you want if you want something to happen with me and Tamba, yeah. just pay me the money. Yeah, yeah. Hey, same here, same here, man. Same here. Is, is yeah. this is this just business with him? It's just business. It's just business. You know. That's that's the way I look at it. Uh, it's all business. I think I think off the record, on the record, whatever. I think he's got a talent for the mic. Uh, you know, I can't say that about his in ring. <laughs> but, <laughs> but hey, uh, <laughs> if he wants to give a go, let's go. If, if man, we take I this back to Madison Square Garden. Were you were you legitimately upset that Cass and Enzo came in and did what they did? Oh, I was fucking pissed. I was I was very fucking pissed. Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't mad at them. I wasn't mad at them. I was fucking pissed off at ROH. Hmm. Yeah, for for pulling a stunt like that, not in New Japan. This ain't your fucking show. You don't you don't disrespect us like that. You don't, you don't fucking, that's just pure disrespect to come on somebody else's show, not tell them what you're going to do and you just pull it off like it's your fucking show. So yeah, I was very fucking upset. But, you know, on the flip that's side. That fucking idiot that belt the wall. On the flip side though, this worked. Like it got over. It was the most, one of the most talked about things at WrestleMania weekend. Is that not a win in, in you know, in, in some regard? Here's, here's the problem with that. Here's a, then people going to think that's okay to do. Mm. And you're going to keep pulling stunts like that. That ain't, you know, Japan is, you got to understand our culture. The culture from there, the respect is a lot. And that should be held in high regard here in the United States too. Or else that's what happens. People think they can throw these kind of stunts. Disrespect is real. So you can't, come on now. Yeah. Come it's on now. It's interesting because when Enzo was telling me the story, I was like, really? Nobody else knew except for, you know, like three people? He's like, no, seriously, man. Like, that was it. It was legit. It ain't your fucking show. <laughs> you think you booked? You think you sold out MSG? You think you think people came to watch ROH? You think people came to see y'all? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, fucking a bunch of fucking amateurs, yo. Come out here, do business like that. Fuck out of here. You, how they like if I just came up and just didn't tell anybody I was going to smack the shit out of fucking somebody. I'm going to slap shit out of you. What you going to do? Yeah, that's, that's the problem here with business out here. With the wrestling business, all these little jits think they can do all this kind of stunts, pull these kind of stunts. Yo, Nah, do business. That business is all fucking shitty. And there's only one one fucking promotion at the top. And you know how that promotion got to the top? Disrespected all the other promotions, stole all the other promotions and fucking took that shit to the top and held it up there. And anybody who tries to come up, they fucking squash them down. There's no respect in the game no more. Yeah. No respect. Yeah. You guys, you can't come on. Look, look, I ain't mad at Enzo. Nah. And he knows that, but if he wants to go at it, yeah, I'll punk him too. Shit, you know, shit. That's just, that's what he doesn't understand. He's out here trying to grab mainstream voice by being disrespectful like that. He doesn't, like, the fact that you don't, that you don't know how disrespect, disrespectful that is, 
it's like boom to me. Like, yeah, and that's my piece on it. Sounds like maybe you should show up at one of Enzo's shows unannounced and then actually like lay into him. Yeah, the problem with that is nobody would come to that show. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 well, I guess that's the end of this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate uh I appreciate what you have going on with Simon Miller, uh who's also a friend of mine. <laughs> I think that he legitimately thought he was going to die that day. Uh you know what? For a split second I thought so too. But that was a uh, man. <laughs> Didn't quite go as, as we planned, but <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, he goes, I don't think that anyone told Haku that this was fake. <laughs> no, I told Haku, all right, let's, let's <laughs> put that on a goddamn record. <laughs> I told him, I might have told him a little too early, I told him a week before, <laughs> and I didn't, maybe I forgot to, to re Iggy that <laughs> right before it went down, maybe I should have, but. Boy, did that seem real. And that's, that's what we were shooting for, right? <laughs> Man, that was legit. Yeah. <laughs> is Haku as crazy as everyone thinks he is? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, 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 uh, he's like, it's black and white with him. It's night and day because he's the, he's the kindest, softest man you ever know, you ever meet. He's very friendly. He's, he's, he's a loving man. He's a family man. But fuck, you switch that on him. You you wrong him in any way. You disrespect him in any way. You're going to see a side that you're just like, man, you never thought that could come out of man. You know, yeah, he'll he'll take you out, man. Just like, I mean, I, I mean I'm sure you've listened to all the, the wrestling stories. Yeah. What I, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sounds like maybe you have a, you know, just a little bit of this in you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> your, your family tree is, is fascinating. And I want to know, I'm curious, who, who is in your family tree with some distant relative that we may not be aware of? In the wrestling world, I mean. Oh. Oh, shoot. Because I interviewed the Usos, and I basically just named everyone who might be yeah. Simone. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's my uncle. Like, everyone yeah. was their uncle. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I can't really say. Um, you see, the Samoans were in the game before, way before my, you know, the Tongans were. My, yeah. my, my father was the first Tongan to come into the wrestling game. So um, we don't have a tree like that like they do. You know, they, they, they go trace all the way back Peter Maivia. So, sure. you know, so my, my father was the first Tongan and there was no Tongan before that. So mine just kind of stops right there. <laughs> what do most people call you outside of wrestling? By my shoot name? <laughs> oh, my. They do? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it bleeds over into real life, you know? Oh, uh, nah. Luckily, I'm able to... Uh, separation of gimmick yeah you know? i don't believe in my gimmick too much so <laughs> let's not fall into that trap <laughs> so you so you're in orlando right now um yeah you just you guys just had a hurricane kind of come through there look i lived in florida for five years i know what, what this is all about yeah yeah um it, it you know i'm i'm i live more towards fort myers towards the gulf yeah, side you're on so the we didn't gulf get, side we had, yeah we, we didn't get much of it but i think the 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 east side uh daytona area kind of got some you know uh, but i'm not sure how bad it was and we didn't see it much in the news so i'm guessing it was all right <laughs> in your time living in florida what's been the worst hurricane you've experienced um i actually missed it uh i i, I don't remember any hurricane i'm always gone i'm always away when the hurricane when the hurricanes um hit and there was one in like the mid 2000s that, that hit that just devastated everything. Even, even my parents' house. Um, uh, uh, Hank, Hurricane Andrew? I, I can't remember the name. Andrew was Hurricane. like 92, I believe. Oh, oh shit. Now, <laughs> there was one in the 2000s, I remember. I only remember this because I was in a, 
I was I was in the military. I was overseas, and I had to watch it on the news come through Florida. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was right. I think that was the big one, like ninety two. Yeah. yeah, there was one in the got 90s, a little bit there was one of. I think people people forget that Hurricane Katrina also hit your side of Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. I miss that one too. I'm, I miss a lot. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I'm not here for these ones. Yeah, well, it's good and bad, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long were you overseas for? Uh, about almost eight months. Um, okay, wow. Yeah, eight, eight months in, in Iraq. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine who's in the Air Force is like, oh, you got to talk to Tama about his time in the Air Force. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's a big, like, that's got to be a big part of your life. Yeah. It's informed a lot of, you know, who you are now. Yeah. 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 It was, it was a good time. Uh, good time in the military. Uh, good learning curve. Um, I think everybody should join the military right out of high school for at least two years and then go on. But it was good structure. Um, serving. I enjoyed my time serving in the United States and learned a lot, made a lot of good friends and did my, my part. And then, I think everything after that, it, it kind of makes me feel like I, you know, I paid my dues now. Let me, let me enjoy the, you know, what this great country has to offer me. No, oh, that sounds very patriotic. Woo. That was, yeah, <laughs> USA. <laughs> Is there anything that you learned from the military that you still carry with you today? Yeah, always. Um, you know. The, there will always be problems, um, no matter what plans you have. The the thing you do is once you get there, and you just adapt to your situation and overcome. It's a, it's the old military uh, tactic, you know, uh, adapt and overcome. So never go. You just change the situation and you overcome that. And that's I feel like we, that's what you do, like. With your not just your entire life, but that's what you do in in the ring too. Like yeah. you figured out a way to like, yeah, make it work. Make it work. Life, huh? That's, <laughs> that's life. Life. <laughs> has I mean, with that said, how much has I mean, Bullet Club's been you finding a way? How much has yeah. Bullet Club changed your life? Um, I, I, I mean, it's definitely put a lot of uh lot of cash in my pocket for sure so it's changed me a lot financially <laughs> you sure. know so uh that's that's number one but uh just just my um perception of wrestling of how it should be and how it can be um it's changed so it, it i really applied a lot of what i learned in the military into that group hmm. uh, this teamwork and adaptation and and overcoming and and keep moving you know if you if you look at the beginning of bullet club you know the guns the whole that we were very mil, uh, military style i was putting a lot of my military um uniqueness into it you know if that made sense um yeah a lot bullet club <laughs> saying, <you know. laughs> if, we, if we take it back what were the original discussions around forming this faction around calling it bullet club like where did those conversations begin um we were approached that um the boss came up and said we want to put you guys together the foreigners it was actually prince david finn balor now uh with talk of, with uh bad luck Fale. and um we were the only foreigners besides tenzai uh that were in new japan so we were always hanging out all the time and you know, uh, they said, look, we're going to put you guys together. You know, you can see you guys are very, you guys got great chemistry outside the ring. We'll see what happens in the ring. And it was just natural. Um, Prince David was going to be the front man. He was getting, uh, he was leveling up from juniors to heavy. And so to, he needed a support group. So father was on this excursion from Missouri. They brought him back. He was going to be his bodyguard. And me and Carl Anderson, I was more, uh, I was like uh, Carl Anderson second. So I would just like be with him always. He's like my mentor. And uh, yeah, so Prince David, Fale were together first. And then me and Carl Anderson came in second. The first name that was brought up, um, I didn't have no say in, in, in the name. 
you know, I, I was just like, all right, tell me what to do and I'll do it, you know, whatever you guys need from me. So, but Prince David was thinking of calling it <laughs> the Bullet Brigade. And, uh, and Father was like, oh, Brigade sounds, you know, what, what if you called it club? Because Father's from New Zealand and he played professional rugby in clubs is a thing. Is the, yeah. 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 So Bullet, that's where Bullet Club came, you know. So took that and ran with it. And here's well, se- seven I years. What your question was? <laughs> I'm talking. I forgot. I, that was it. You answered the entire right. question. <laughs> what is it? Seven Just years now. On. <laughs> it's it's been seven years now. Seven years. Yeah. Wow. I mean, obviously, you had no idea it was going to turn into what it's turned into. You know what? A lot of people ask me. You know, did you know Bullet Club was going to be the way? like the, as, as successful as it is now and my answer is yes did i know it was going to take this route no right but, you know i think if you saw something i mean uh, i'm very man we we got to do it no matter what you know and i knew i knew it was going to be successful i just didn't know how successful you know you don't you don't have to name names we can if you want but have you had people who have been like come on man let, let me, let me, yeah, let me be part of this thing. I see how successful you guys are, are, are being. Come on, share some of this with me. Um, no one's ever said it like that <laughs> or, you know, I, but I, I know people want to be in it. You know, but at the beginning, I think we just kind of started letting people in <laughs> this coming in no matter what, but it wasn't really our decision at the beginning. Um, but we, we learned a lot in those first three, four years. And then after that, we start, okay, we got to do this carefully. And, and, uh, we didn't want it to kind of end up like how not a knock on NWO, but how NWO was. And it's kind of like, yeah, there's so many members. Like, yeah. yeah. So many members. Yeah. You know, there's, a, I think there's a way to do that where we can have so many members, but keep it not going where it's just. A mess you know i think there's a way to do that well if you have 46 members doesn't that mean that you have to split all the royalties 46 ways uh, yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but if you're gonna if there's gonna be 46 members in there i better see 46 people them earning something for bullet club <laughs> <earning that money. laughs> they're putting the damn work y'all can't just come in and surf bro <laughs> you know <laughs> Did the did the, the former members still get a cut of the royalties, or are they? Hell no. Okay. The hell for. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they stop putting it putting in work. Y'all go. <laughs> Shit. None of y'all can get it. Y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> what was your take on WWE's version of the club? <laughs> um, you know, it's just like anything else. Just like. Mexico's LIJ that became LIJ of Japan. It's just like the hurt business or the the mob, whatever. You know, it's any it's hey, when you're doing something so good, it, I everybody wants to copy it. That's and that's a nod to us, you know, and I'm I'm okay with that. But you ain't gonna do it like us though. <laughs> you know, so it's all good. It's all good. I got. I ain't got no hate for that. Y'all can keep trying. That uh, the Bullet Club logo has become as legendary as like NWO's logo, as legendary mm-hmm. as DX's mm-hmm. logo. Mm-hmm. Who was it that came up with that? New Japan, New Japan designer, and ah. they they put it together because the, the first logo was shit. It was just like a bullet, and then <laughs> and we're like, all right, we'll try to make it work. But the reason how they the, how they came up with that the infamous one um gallows when we used to dress up in military fatigues he used to paint down the black down his eye right here and then um you know because of our uh, military style that's where the two guns came in like this um and that that's really it it was it was our military style but because that 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 skull with the open like it's like a gap right here that's gallows all the way and i knew that and i just i think they just saw our whole 
thing together and just started to put it all together and it bam you know let me ask you some okay it's been seven years right and we had okay. that logo yeah we had that logo for six years yeah do you feel and he's a, a new a new revamp a new style do you think we need to like like i said it's to, we try to reinvent redo you know I've, I've i've done a few designs and i threw it at social media and boy i got shit on <laughs> so uh you know like i said i try you know try things and see if it works and it doesn't but what do you think do you it's, think we need no it's so iconic uh -huh. And and you're well aware of this because it's been ripped off a thousand times by <laughs> every person, every person with a wrestling podcast or every independent uh -huh. wrestler. Like this has been ripped yeah. off a thousand times. If you do something else, it's just going to look like a cheapened version of that original iconic logo. And you know this, like Nike's not changing their logo. Coca-Cola's yeah. not changing their logo. You're not changing this logo. Touche, touche. Cool. All right. Well, that answers that. But, and I think that like, you know, look at, look at the iconic, if we're just going to compare to wrestling, look at the iconic mm -hmm. factions, the NWO, we, we know what that logo looks like. Yeah. And that logo still sells on t-shirts, you know, 20 plus years later. Same with DX's logo, the spray paint with the green DX, yeah. you know, this is an iconic logo. And maybe, maybe you're too close into this to realize like how yeah. big this is, but mm -hmm. this is something that. I think for people who have never even watched New Japan, they know yeah. what the Bullet Club is. And they yeah. know exactly what that logo is. Yeah, true. Okay. Hell, I have a Bullet Club shirt. <laughs> who doesn't, you know? Yeah, cool. Very cool. With that All said, right. when, when you have someone like Prince Devitt, who is a mm -hmm. big part of the Bullet Club, and he decides to take this deal and go to WWE, mm -hmm. you know, what do those conversations look like you know, among you guys as friends? Yeah. Uh, you know, one, we're happy. You, you, you're, you're elevating to a platform that, that makes money because we're all in here to make money. You yeah. know, so we're happy for it. Number two, we're sad that you're leaving our, our, our circle, you know, and, but at the end, you know, you got, you got to do what you can to uh, support you and your family. And, and it always sucks when, when somebody leaves guys leave because you're like ah uh, because especially when you have a great chemistry with them you know and they're your friends you spend more time on the road with them than than you spend with your family you get to know these guys you get to know their them in and out their family their their personal lives their ups and downs and, and you connect you know these guys become your family because you're on with them you're you wake up, you stay at the same hotel, you get on the same bus, you sit next to each other, you talk about shit, you eat together, you eat lunch together, breakfast, dinner. You, I mean, the whole week you're together. You spend more yeah. time with them than you see your own kids. You yeah. know? So when they get out of the leave, it's like, it, it, it kind of takes like this piece of you, like, fuck, man. You know? and, and then you guys come in and you gotta reform this bond. And, uh, you know, it's it's... It's different, it, you know. Sounds like adult summer camp, you know, when you're like <laughs> doing everything together. That's true. <laughs> Kinda, right? Adult summer camp. Was that Nickelodeon uh, camp one or one or whatever camp? <laughs> <laughs> That's like a uh, wrestling summer camp. That's what <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Camp Bullet Club. Yeah, Camp Bullet Club. <laughs> <laughs> was it? I mean, but WWE then, you know, after, well, I guess he was one of them, you know, Finn Balor was one of them, but WWE was taking a lot of talent from New Japan. Mm -hmm. Was there ever like a frustration within New Japan of like, oh my God, you're taking Shinsuke, you're taking AJ, you're taking Gallows and Anderson. Oh yeah. And the list goes on and on. <laughs> oh, it, it hurt them. It hurt them because these, these were their stars, top guys, you know? Um, yeah, you, you can basically say they came and raided our locker room. And that's, you know, Sensuke was a, like, at that time he left, he was one of, he was our biggest star. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, he hit this momentum after coming back from Mexico. Like, he, was, he changed, got very charismatic. He was killing it every match. Um, and then you had Gallows and Anderson who were, 
tag team champs. They're, you know, not only big in inside the ring, but they, you know, Anderson's been there and he's been like a locker room uh, for the foreign guys, kind of like the overseer, you know? And then you got AJ Styles, who's also huge, huge star. And that's a big chunk to take off the top, you know, a big, yeah. big chunk. So yeah, I heard them, but at the same time, that gap was an opportunity for us lower cards to move up and prove ourselves that we can't fill that spot, but we can hold it up, you know? So like, you know, everything has its reason and, and there's a silver lining and all, you know? And from the looks of things, you're stepping up into like a singles competitor, you know, position here. Yeah. 2020 is a hell of a year, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it comes right back down to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah. I think it's time. I've accomplished everything um, as a tag team wrestler, a uh, six-time IWGP heavyweight tag team champs, and I really don't want to try to reach 10. <laughs> That's just not, you know, I've proved it six times, and I want to see what I can do as a singles competitor. Do you have anything in mind, any goals of what you want to do as you move forward as a singles competitor? Yeah. There's only one goal. And I think it should be everybody's goal is to be, if you're going to be a singles competitor, is to be the IWGP heavyweight champion. Yeah. Anything else is shit. If you're not first, you're last. Mm. You know, that's it. Y'all can keep your intercontinental. Y'all can keep your US title. You're never, I'll never be that because I don't ever want to be a fucking never champion. You know, <laughs> keep all that shit. And I think if you're, if you want to be the man, you got to be the man and the man is to be the IWGP heavyweight champion. Is this, you know, is this shift happening because of coronavirus or is it happening in spite of coronavirus? Was the plan for you to be a singles competitor this year regardless? No, no. I think this whole time I've been home just, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yes. No, <laughs> I don't know. In between. <laughs> mixture of all <laughs> you know so well, i mean it, it could be and look i don't know but if if there was no coronavirus if you were continuing yeah. to live and spend your time in japan yeah. and doing your thing as a tag team there might never have been that break to be right. able to break out right i i yeah i think so because i was kind of i got comfortable <laughs> i got real comfortable sitting at that tag team champion um stage you know so yeah, maybe. I'll, I'll take your, your explanation for it. I like that. Please, yeah. Feel free to take <laughs> it. Look, I think if anything, this quarantine has made a lot of us realize that, man, once this thing's over, once life gets a little bit back to normal, I want to do this, this, and this. It's like it's made us excited for like what's on the other side of this. Yeah. Yes, true. I, I, I think so. You know, you, you have a lot of time to sit home and think and think and think and you're like well shit <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I can't wait to get this over because i'm gonna do this different i'm gonna do this different and i was like i got i got comfortable and i'm like i need to change man i need to change yeah so i started actually writing things down i was like <laughs> you know when, when nothing was open there in march yeah. and april i started writing down like all right by this time next year i'm going to Dot, dot, yeah. dot, dot, dot. And this is exactly yeah. what you're doing. Maybe you haven't yeah. written it down, but you've said. Oh, I've written it down. Oh, I've written better. it down. Oh, yeah. I've written it down. I got to see it. I got to see it. You know? that, Action. That's such a big thing that I don't think people realize. The power mm -hmm. of writing something down. The power of yeah. putting it out, physically putting it out into the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm with you. I think we kind of, we have an understanding of that. You know, once you, the thought process and then put it in the paper, is, that's your first step of action. And then. Yeah moving i love this yeah look i had plans to go to the beach party this year i had plans to go to the <laughs> you know i wanted to see ken shamrock there i was very excited about this and obviously everything during wrestlemania week you know got yeah. canceled so do you have plans for some sort of party in hollywood yes. next year yes where hollywood that's what's happening yeah wrestlemania is in la next year oh shit why why did I think why did I think that it was coming back to Tampa? There was something <laughs> it was supposed to be in Tampa. I know, I know. I 
no, I'm sorry. That's a Super Bowl. Super Bowl's in Tampa. That's why. We, we can yeah. have a Bullet Club party there, too. Yeah, yeah. We can have the Bullet Club, um, I don't know, tailgate party. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. There is plans. I'm not sure if it's going to be in Hollywood, but there is plans to, to do another one, uh, another beach party, block party, party all together, but uh, bigger and better. And, you know, just to make up for this, the lost times. Huh? <laughs> well, I think we got to do something big here. It's, it's yeah. Tomatonga versus Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> look man i'm trying to make a party not kill a party all right <laughs> <laughs> with um with your friends gallows and anderson signing with impact now mm -hmm. uh you're going to be seeing them in japan sounds like pretty soon how excited mm -hmm. are you to reunite with them man i'm very excited man I'm very very excited uh man it's been like it's been five years since we all you know hung out and being together as as, as you know as as co-workers i'm very excited man uh i know in that in that five year timeline as we've grown and you know I'm, I want, I'm, I'm happy to see my friends again very happy the good brothers with, with your other bullet club members you know doing mm -hmm. their thing in AEW, you think mm -hmm. there's a chance we'll see maybe you appear in AEW or cody and kenny do something with you guys in japan uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't want to say no to anything because you just never know. Um, and, and I'm always open to ideas. I'm open to anything. And but you know, money talks, baby. Money talks. Money does all the talking right now. So you know, AEW wants to <clears throat> wants to move that route. Show me the money. <laughs> Little Jerry Maguire there. Huh? Show me the money. I like that. Well, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I know that uh, your kids are in the other room waiting for the dad <laughs> to come back. I'm oh, sorry if you heard them all screaming. Over here. No, no. <laughs> so uh, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. It's always great to talk to a fellow podcaster as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm trying to get on your level. You know, I'm, I'm learning, learning. That on my on level? Podcast, on a podcast. Hey, I know you, you won a, some awards. I know you've done, you, you've done this very... Uh, for a very long time i'm listening I'm, I'm trying to learn i'm trying to take notes here write it down you know? ah, write it down <laughs> i'm here if you have any questions i'd, I'd be happy to uh, help thank you but thank i you see your me. show climbing its way up the charts thomas island and i just thank you you guys are crushing it Ooh, thank you thank you very much hopefully one day here we can all be in that same level <laughs> well I, I look forward to doing this in person with you next time thank you thank you me too man me too. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, look forward to seeing you back in the ring. And uh, yes. man, all the best to you and your family. Thank you. You too, Chris. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Tama Tonga, what a guy. I feel like we could talk all day. In fact, we would have talked all day if it wasn't for his kids in the other room. And, you know, he had to go back to doing his main job of being a father. But what do you think about the original name of the Bullet Club? The Bullet Brigade. Just doesn't roll off the tongue the same way, does it? The Bullet Brigade. And I think they made the right choice with Bullet Club. Speaking of making the right choice, do you agree with me when Tama turned the tables on me and asked for my opinion as to whether they should update the Bullet Club logo? I mean, it's an iconic logo. You can't go changing that. Or do you think that we need a 2020 version of the Bullet Club logo? No. We definitely don't need that. And we talked about it a few times during this interview, but it is such an important thing to do if you want to manifest things into the world, make them happen. Every high achiever does this. It's such a simple thing to do. You need to write stuff down. It's so important to take the goals that you have in your brain put it into your hand, write it down on a piece of paper, and then put it out into the world. There's something about that physical act of actually writing it down. So if there's things in your life that you wanna make happen, write stuff down. The lighting really get into that. Write stuff down <laughs> every single day. And if you listen to Thomas Island, if you listen to his podcast, wherever you find his podcast, you can also find my podcast, The Chris Van Vliet Show. This interview is available there, as are all of my other interviews. I will put a link down below in the pinned comments so you can check that out. So we will, See you there. Actually, we will hear you there because it's a podcast.
you know, 